Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of uh, Tech Har Sin Hardware Tekken 10. Um, so today I'm doing a little expose on OC Touch. Um, so basically, OC Touch is laid out as so. This button my finger is on right now increases multiplier. This one increases ba a CPU, decreases CPU multiplier. These two increase and decrease CPU base clock in 1 megahertz increments. These multiplier buttons are in 1 multiplier increments. Gear button will change the plus and the minus for base clock into 0.1 megahertz increments. Increments. Power button LN2 switch will go from three whatever you're set 4.2 in this instant. Switch it down to 1.6. Back up to 4.2 on the fly. This is very very convenient in case you want to go up and down my little base clock increments, but you're not stable at certain frequencies. So what you do is you go down to 1600 megahertz or 16x, increase the base clock just so and then switch back and then validate really quickly that's how you get world records clear CMOS button right here uh, then you have uh, these voltage read points connectors and uh, whatever uh, here you have your postcode display as well as uh, reset button these two switches right here this first one switches between single and dual BIOS mode single BIOS mode is better for overclocking um, but if you normal and you feel like you're corrupted, then switch it back to dual BIOS mode. Uh, main and backup BIOS switch is the second one, and that one switches between the main and the backup BIOS. Dual BIOS technology is pretty um, interesting, but however, it can cause longer uh, recovery. Uh, thus, that's why they give you the ability to boot, uh, just lose it, basically. Disable it. Then we have Corsair's beautiful uh, kit right here. Uh, this is a C... 10 kit, uh, 266, top of line, 16 gigabytes. Imagine that, 16 gigabytes at 2666 megahertz C10. How amazing is that? Look at that light bar light it up right there. Yeah, right. It's really nice, right? Uh, so it looks really cool in the dark. That's why I turned the lights out for a second. Uh, my only thing would be to improve it is to make it orange. <laughs> um, this 16 gigabyte, all I had to do to get it up to 2666, cast 10, all defaults, um, not defaults, but actually all XMP, it's an overclock for the CPU, but almost all C Ivy Ridge CPU should be able to do this. All I had to do was enable XMP on this board, it's just really quick and easy. Okay, moving on, we have an Antec cooler. Um, I think you can see I changed the light to orange, it's really nice. And then I have one other goodie. Uh, today I have uh, a nice Kingston SSD in line for us. Uh, this is Kingston's um, 256 gigabyte, uh, 500 read, 500 write, and 30 megabyte uh, random read speed. Really quick, really beautiful. I love using this for my reviews because I always have to reinstall OSs for every new board, and that just makes it quick. All right, so let's take a look at OC Touch. Now, there's a few things we got to get going to get OC Touch to work. There's a few things you need to install, uh, basically. Okay, so the first thing you need to install is Intel Meef driver. Um, it's very easy to install. Uh, it's on the disk. Then you need to install OC Touch driver. Then, just to be sure, I boot up at 42x. You need to open GTL. However, you need to open it as administrator, and you have to install its integrated clock service driver. Oh, opened it twice, no good. <laughs> anyway, so 42x. Now, OC Touch at this moment will only increase base clock up and down effectively. Right now, I'm pressing plus. However, my multiplier is not increasing at all, right? It's not. Alright, it's on 42x. Press plus again, nothing happens, right? So, what do we do? Well, I need to initialize that clock service driver. So I'm going to change GTL. I can take it down a multiplier. I just have to change the multiplier once with GTL, and then it'll work. Apply 41x. Now I can just exit out of GTL, and I do not, not need GTL anymore. Now let's watch OC Touch in action. Ready, set. Let's go to 45x, right? 45x on the fly. You saw that, right? Now, there's a cool other thing you can look for with OC Touch, and that's this uh, thing on the thing. For 2D, right? 2D means that it's been up uh, 4 above A. So let's go back to A, right? When I press this OC Touch button down, it's going to take it to 2C, watch. 2C. And 2C is 44X. 
as you can see here, right? Now, let's change that. Now, what if I go to 2A, right? 1, 2. That'll go to 42X, right? 4200. Now, let's look at 2A. So, you can actually count. You can actually count exactly where you are through just this. Just take a mark of where you started. Below 2A is 29, and that's where 4.1 gigahertz is. All right? So it's pretty cool to watch that. Um, you can use the postcode to let you know where you're at. It's a pretty nifty feature. All right, guys and gals. So that finishes my little OC Touch demo. Actually, let me go in the UEFI and show you what I did to change everything. Uh, these are the settings I used with BIOS F5F. The same thing will work with uh, F3 OC BIOS, which is used for overclockers because it allows more V-Core. F5F, all I did was, I, you can either leave base clock on auto or set it. Advanced core features, you want to enable CPU pillow over voltage, disable turbo, disable all these other ones, all right? And all I had to do for memory was change XMP to profile one. As you see here, no timing configurations. However, it is using correct timings. Uh, voltage, all I did was CPU voltage to 1.3 volts. Uh, just say extreme per fast and turbo for load line. DRAM voltage not even touched. And uh, you see memory frequency is 266. All right, guys and gals, so that's a nice little intro. I uh, hope to see you guys again. Thanks for watching.